I've lost 130 pounds and kept it off for eight years. And I want to talk about the five golden rules of weight loss and how if you break any one of them, it can make it very hard for you to lose weight and keep it off. And it can also cause you to go into a diet overeating cycle that can be never ending. So the first rule, is never rely on anyone except for yourself. And it does mean like in general, like yeah, it's cool to have like a workout partner or a partner to go on a diet with, but at the end of the day, you do have to rely on yourself. But the biggest thing that I wanna talk about here is when you're going out with other people. So for example, if you're going to a party and you're counting on food that you can build into your calorie deficit to stay on track and lose weight, you're counting on that food to be there, and you get there and they don't end up having that food, or you're expecting dinner to be at five and it ends up not being at eight, and you're so hungry, you end up eating things that you didn't plan on and way more of it. I'm not saying, does that mean you never go out or have fun or go to gatherings and parties and stuff? No, it means always have a backup plan. So for example, last week I went to a retirement party. I'm on a mini cut right now, but I decided that I was gonna go eat the food because they were having chicken, potatoes, salad, veggies, and a couple other things, cake and lasagna. But I was like, no, I can eat because I can eat the chicken, potatoes, veggies, and salad. Well, when I got there, the catering company made a mistake and there were no veggies. So the veggies I was counting on filling up my belly with, they were gone. But because I've been doing this for so long, I had a backup plan. I brought in my purse a protein bar and I had a, you know, about a couple cups of fresh fruit that I brought in a lunch pail because just in case, because I know to always have a backup. I still participated, I ate the food, it was great. You know, I let myself have a little more chicken and a little more salad to make up for the lack of veggies, but I had my backup plan because I've learned I have to rely on me. I can enjoy celebrations, I go places, I hang out with people and family and friends, I eat at parties, but I always have a snack in my purse just in case something's delayed or um, there's things that I, you know, I'm on a mini cut. I don't really want to eat certain things right now, you know, so I'll let myself eat some, but I always have my backup plan. Anything non-perishable, a protein bar, some sort of, you know, like tuna and crackers kit, anything I can throw in my purse and have just in case, you know, for example, like Kyle and I'll go out with family members who don't eat for hours because they don't have an appetite like Kyle and I do, but we eat steadily every two to four hours. So if we don't have a snack, we're gonna be starving and all heck might break loose when we come home. And that it also goes for like a workout partner. So sure, have a workout partner. They're really cool, they're really motivating. Like Sassy, my husband, the camera friend, um, we've lost the same amount of weight together and we've kept it off for the same amount of time. We do, for the most part, work out together, eat together, do cardio together, but there are lots of times where we're on our own and we have to be just as intense in our workout and cardio separately as we do when we're with each other. And the only one that can do that is me. I have to go, Nicole, you gotta get up at five and do your cardio even when Sassy's not there. I'm going to the retirement party. I went without Sassy. There was no veggies. I could have easily made it an excuse to eat the cake. But I was like, nope, I committed to this. I got my backup plan. I eat my protein bar, eat the chicken, the potato, the salad, and stick to what I was doing. But it has to be me. So only rely on yourself, always have a backup plan, and still enjoy yourself and enjoy life. Just have a snack in your purse. <laughs> I'll just add uh, one point. It's not selfish to take care of yourself and no. go after your goals. At weddings, me and Nicole have been known to be found in the parking lot with rice cakes, protein bars, and diet pop, taking our own meal breaks because those events too, they generally make you wait hours and hours and hours for food and we can't do that and stay on track. Oh, for example, like Kyle's brother got married in September and <laughs> the first thing I did was put a lunch pail at our chairs because we stood up in the wedding. In the lunch pail was water, 
protein bars and diet pop because we knew it was gonna be hours and we were gonna be thirsty and hungry. And we also had protein bars for anyone else who was hungry and lots of people were eating them because you're hungry when you're waiting at weddings. Like sometimes it can take forever and that really helped us stay on track. That's a good one, Seth. Number two, never deny or ignore a craving and plan when you're gonna give it to yourself. So the first part, never deny a craving. In the past, when I tried to lose weight and I would get a craving, I would pretend that it didn't exist. I would like shove it out of the way, totally ignore it. But then what would happen is it would build and build and build. And I also struggled with emotional eating when I was trying to lose weight. And then one day all heck would break loose and I would eat and go way off track. I would eat and eat and eat because I had been denying myself for so long. So I learned when I get a craving, instead of ignoring or denying it, I'll actually give it to myself. And depending on what my goals are, I usually give myself a low calorie version that tastes really good, as close to the regular as I can. And then every once in a while, I do give myself the regular thing. And then another thing that I learned is when I ignore a craving, Typically, a craving is trying to tell me something. Usually, it was my body saying, hey, Nicole, you've been dieting for a long time, but you've been leaving out certain things. You're, oh, hey, Nicole, your body is craving this because you're lacking certain nutrients. So I'd have to go back and go, there was a time where I did a, a low-fat diet for a very long time, and my body was starting to crave fattier things like um, butter, eggs, red meat just because I had cut it out for so long and I went back and realized I was really lacking balance wise in that so I went and put back some healthy fat into my diet and like I still eat mostly lower fat low cow but I include a balance because that helps me get all the nutrients I need and it also helps me be less hungry throughout the day and then the third part of that is to plan when you're going to give yourself your low-cal version or your regular version because what happened to me in the past is all heck would break loose and then the food would tell me it would control me when and what I was gonna eat now I control the food when I want it what I'm gonna have so for example this Kyle and I are doing a mini cut right now and where this is week number three we know at the fourth week, we're gonna give ourselves like a cheat day, a day where we can eat whatever we want without tracking. And that's a planned thing. That way, the food is not controlling us. We're controlling when we have it. And I just had a craving the other day for like dessert stuff. So we made like some dessert overnight oats, like low calorie versions of those things I was craving. And you'll, the video should already be out by the time you see this one. Um, but anyway, giving myself the cravings and not denying it really helped me stay on track and it's why I was able to lose the weight and keep it off for so long. And that's why I'm making this video. I broke every single one of these rules and it caused me to be in a diet and then all heck break loose, trigger my emotional eating, never ending cycle for decades. And I'm hoping that sharing these rules with you guys and it will inspire anybody out there who's struggling to maybe look at what they're doing and not treat their weight loss as a punishment, but be more gentle on their, their selves and like enjoy what they're doing. Three, never skip meals and always have some sort of meal prep, tasty meals prepped and ready to go in your house or easy to make meals that only take like a couple of minutes. So. I, in the beginning, I skipped meals, especially breakfast. I skipped that a lot. I thought if I skip meals that it would help me lose weight because it would help me take in less calories. But what ended up happening was I would skip breakfast and by the end of the day, I would be so hungry, all heck would break loose. I'd eat anything and everything I could find I would go way off track, feel guilty, and then it would take me months to get back on track. So I started learning having five meals a day, like breakfast, lunch, dinner, and two snacks, and spreading them out two to four hours apart really helped me feel level, never starving to the point where I needed to overeat all the time or where it would like trigger my emotional eating and stuff like that. It really helped me 
just feel better and not feel so hungry all the time. Because when you're in a calorie deficit trying to lose weight, you're already hungry, it's normal. So it just, you know, just made me feel more level. And the other thing is, when I didn't have my meals prepped, again, I would be so hungry, I'd go for, mo for food in the fridge, nothing prepped, I would end up eating things I didn't want to. So having tasty meals prepped and ready to go in the fridge is a must. It's one of the biggest reasons why Kyle and I were able to lose the weight and keep it off. And also, there are gonna be days, you have to account for the days where you're like, I don't want a meal prep today. So having microwave like minute rice on hand, pre-cooked chicken, go grab a rotisserie chicken at the store that's already cooked, throw some microwave rice and some frozen veg, super easy quick meals that you can prep in like five minutes so that you're not tempted to go for the stuff that you didn't really plan on and that really helps set you up for success. Four, never try to fix emotional eating or like overeating slip ups by trying to work it off or by like cutting back your food. So for example, when I would slip up and overeat or when I would have emotional eating, I would try to make up for it by over exercising, like to work it off. I would think I could, if I could just do a couple hours of cardio, I could work off all of that food and it would be like a punishment. Or what I would do is take away, so like, you know, say I was going to have something cool for dinner, I was gonna go out with my friends, I would be like, I'm gonna cancel that because I can't eat that anymore and I'm eating salad for the rest of the night and that is it. Don't try to make up for it because all that does is cause it to be worse. So what I would do is, well, I would try to work it off and then the next day, I all heck would break loose again because I punished myself. Or I'd take away food to try to make up for the food I ate and then again it would build and build and build and then I would end up overeating again and it was just this crazy cycle that I couldn't get out of. So instead, what I learned to do is be gentle on myself and go, okay, I slipped up, I overate, I'm gonna get right back on track. Whatever I was scheduled to eat after that, I'm gonna eat it, I'm gonna do my workouts like normal, eat the same amount of calories I normally do, and just keep trucking, just keep moving forward. The other thing I would do is look at, did I slip up because I'm denying myself something? Is there something in my diet that I don't like? Or, you know, I would look for patterns in why did it cause me to go off track? Like, is there something I could tweak in my diet that would make me like it better so that I would stay on track and then keep moving? And number five, never, <laughs> lost my paper. Number five, never start Monday. So what I mean by that is, Kyle and I for years struggled to lose weight and we were doing things that weren't sustainable. And what would happen is we would, you know, hit the weekend like Saturday and all heck would break loose. And after we would go, okay, we got to do something about this. So Monday morning, we're going to start. The thing is, why Monday? Why not Sunday? Or why not right after you realized, okay, I should probably, you know, try to lose weight or I want to lose weight. Why Monday? Because usually, we were about to do something that was not sustainable. And so we would put it off till Monday because we'd be like, okay, we gotta get everything out. We gotta eat everything that we've ever wanted to eat because come Monday, chicken, broccoli, rice for the rest of your life. So ask yourself if you're like, oh, I'm gonna start Monday, I'm gonna get everything and you know, start Monday, why? Why can't you start Sunday or why can't you start Saturday night? As soon as you ask yourself that, it, it immediately points out the holes in your plan. Yes. And so if you have to start Monday, it means that you think that you can't enjoy stuff. Dieting should not feel like a punishment. It shouldn't feel like you're going to give everything up. Like, you know, I just told you about this overnight oats and it's because like we made three dessert protein overnight oats. And for three mornings, Kyle and I were like, we're eating dessert for breakfast. Like it doesn't even feel like we're dieting. That's how it should feel. You want to jump out of bed, 
eat the things you plan because you shouldn't be denying your cravings. You should be either find a low-cal version or eat the regular thing every once in a while. It, you should love it. You should love what you're doing for exercise, love what you're doing for food to the point where you're like, that's it. Sunday, oh yeah, not, oh, I'm gonna start Monday. It should feel like a privilege to be doing and eating, you know, eating what you're eating and doing what you're doing. You're allowed to like it and you should enjoy it. It shouldn't be a punishment. And so the friends, I really hope that this video helped any of you. If your weight loss at, at any point, your meal plan, your cardio, your workouts feels like a drag and you don't wanna do it, take a look at what you're doing and see if you can make it more enjoyable because weight loss should never feel like a punishment. This is actually for you to feel good about yourself, to make so that you feel great and love life every day. It shouldn't, you shouldn't be dreading it. And people so. always ask like how, what are tips to fix my emotional eating? Everything Nicole just said for the last 10 minutes. Oh, and the other thing is we get asked all the time, like how do you get your motivation? Again, if you have to start Monday, if you need motivation, look at it because it's pointing out, like Kyle said, the holes. I don't need motivation because every day I wake up and I'm like, I am eating chicken, bacon, toast, butter, eggs, like I love it. The only times you need motivation is for things you don't wanna do or that you don't like to do. Or you know it's gonna be really difficult. So if you don't make your weight loss a punishment, you're not gonna need motivation because you're gonna be like, yeah, let's go buddy. You know, that's how it should feel. Yeah, you might wear Crocs <laughs> with these socks. You're not supposed to show it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the friends, I really hope that you get inspired from this video to just love your journey and love what you're doing and eating while you're trying to meet your weight loss and fitness goals. Um, if you wanna know exactly, exact meals and portions that I ate to lose the weight, I do have weight loss eBooks. Links are down below. Code Nicole will save you 10%. I also have Jolly Old Hoodled. HTLT subs, um, luckier marshmallow protein, luckier marshmallow cereal. Oh my gosh, I'm a cereal girl. This is my favorite protein. They do have the best protein flavors, no joke. Code Nicole will save you 10%. Also, check out this vid and this vid so that you can get lots of fun, sustainable weight loss tips. Real people in the real world lose them weight joy in what they do not making it a punishment check it out cutie thanks for watching give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and i'll catch you in the next vid cute really look at this whoa <sighs> this is when you love what you're doing you just can't hide it <laughs> <laughs> i love you peace see ya <laughs> bye Remember the friends that weight loss isn't just about the number on the scale. It's also about here and here, heart and mindset. Bye through it. <laughs>